Friday, October 21st, we find summer conditions enveloping the country, but up to the northwest, the next change appears. Welcome back to another edition of Forecast Lab. We'll start you out with that surface map, and that does show southerly flow extending up from Texas into the Great Lakes and up into Quebec and Ontario. We don't have much moisture associated with that southerly flow just yet because we're very early in that moisture return phase. However, dew points coming up to 50, above 50 in East Texas and up into Arkansas, but you can see just to the north, still hanging on to 30s in Oklahoma and Missouri. The dry line has not set up. If we look closer at that data, we don't see much of a gradient from West Texas to the Gulf, but very likely in the next day or so, we will see that dry line starting to form up near the Caprock or in Central Texas. For the time being, lee side troughing with that zonal flow through the central part of the country. And looking elsewhere around the country, we've got that outgoing ridge along the East Coast. That's the remnants of that polar air mass that swept through the eastern part of the country. And you can see those morning temperatures this morning. These were not the overnight lows. This was just a snapshot around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. And we had 30s all the way down into northern Florida, 34 around Tallahassee, and those 30s extended all the way up into Virginia. And with that ridge heading east, we've got the return flow opening up. And let's take a look in the northwestern U.S., the polar front definitely in place through that region. If we look at the thickness lines, which are these dashed lines, barely visible, that paints out a bare clinic zone extending from Washington into the Dakotas. And south of that, we find the polar front, a series of them, one wave in Montana and the other off the coast of Oregon. So that'll be increasingly becoming a part of the forecast over the weekend. Taking a look up north, quiet conditions in Canada, although we do have northerly flow, the temperatures are a little bit mild. And you can see those 20s there. We should see weather just a little bit colder than that. Rankin Inlet in the northwest part of Hudson Bay. We should see a high in the lower 20s. We're kind of in between October and November there. And the average low should be about 12 degrees. And maybe we're kind of close to that, but we should see things a little bit colder when we have a vast northerly flow like this. I would expect to see those temperatures well down into the teens. And then looking across the rest of Canada, occlusion, that system heading up into the graveyard around Baffin Island, and significant warm air advection coming across Quebec, and gradually we should bring up that moisture so I'd expect a trend towards cloudy conditions in eastern Canada. Checking the upper air conditions, a lot of you have requested this chart. So as we go into winter, we're going to try to incorporate this more into the program. And what this shows is a very strong polar front jet across the Aleutians into the Gulf of Alaska. That's helping to create that stormy weather. And this is associated with that negative PNA pattern we talked about back on Wednesday. This is what we tend to see, and we end up with a northwesterly flow, kind of stormy, and that's good for getting rain into Seattle. So the polar front jet running about like that, and a split flow pattern. We've got another jet segment down to the south, and that's undoubtedly going to be a branch of the polar front jet because of all that cold weather we talked about in the southeastern U.S., that's going to support a polar front jet and not necessarily a subtropical jet. So one segment down there through the southwestern U.S. across Florida and then accelerating quite a bit across the Canadian Maritimes. Troughing up to the north in Hudson Bay, looks like we've scaled back a little bit from that active Hudson Bay pattern and we're getting more into a zonal weather regime. All right, let's check out those temperature extremes. And I do like this chart because it points to upcoming wild and crazy weather. Usually any kind of big weather change is associated with major effects on the high and low temperatures. 
So here we've got that outgoing cold air mass. That's going to be about the last of that. And here's the warmer weather getting up to 88 degrees at Dodge City this afternoon. Uh, for tomorrow, there's a cluster of hot weather right off to Caprock. We've got that southwesterly downslope flow, and that's bringing up those readings up to 93 at Wichita Falls, tying the record set almost 90 years ago. Same thing at Oklahoma City. The temperature extremes move up north on Sunday into Nebraska. This chart doesn't show it, but we're looking at a major wind event and possibly some extreme fire weather conditions across Kansas. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. For Monday, a cold front sweeps through the central U.S. and temperatures return to seasonal normals. So not much of a change coming up for Tuesday. Nothing really to talk about for Wednesday. And Thursday, looking about the same. Another way we can take a look at the extreme weather is with the extreme forecast index. This is a relatively new type of chart that was introduced, well, operationally in the past five or ten years. I don't really remember seeing this chart before that. And this is produced by the ECNWF, the European Centers for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. So here you can see that outgoing cold air. You're going to watch that slip into the Atlantic, and that's replaced by all this warm air and the purple indicating strong winds. This chart here is for the remainder of today. Moving into tomorrow, extensive wind all the way from California into the Four Corners and up towards Wyoming. I would not want to be driving a tractor trailer along Interstate 80 and maybe not along Interstate 40 either. That's going to be kind of hairy. And also wind starting to appear in Texas as well with that southerly flow coming up north. For Saturday night, heading into Sunday afternoon, extensive wind. And that's going to focus on Kansas and into eastern Colorado. Back behind it, we can see precipitation with a sort of an anafront setup. Some of that's going to be cold core activity with the upper level trough hanging around this area. And lots of warm air spreading up into Minnesota and Wisconsin. For Sunday night into Monday, the wind heads northeast into Minnesota and Wisconsin. Looks like a lot of precip starting to come together. That's not all going to be rain. That's going to be snow as well. So that's going to hit places around Winnipeg and the lakes pretty hard. And back behind the system, you can see some cold air coming in from the Pacific into the Four Corners area and the Great Basin. Monday night into Tuesday, plenty of warm air heading up into Quebec, interacting with that weather system, but not really much going on in the U.S. itself. Then for Wednesday, pretty quiet around much of the U.S., warmer than average in the northeastern U.S. And then for Thursday, Looks like a very slight cool down in the Great Lakes region. But as you can see, not very much going on. So spelled out on the charts, this is how it looks westerly through much of the U.S. And then going into tomorrow and Sunday, you can see that weather system coming from the northwestern U.S. Broken up into a few little waves, probably about like that. Warm front indicated by the red, cold front by the blue. So there's that anafront setup that we talked about with snow from Montana down into Utah in northwestern Colorado. And out ahead of it, lee side trough, probably a dry line setup. And Sunday is going to be our big weather day. That's what it's going to look like right there around 4 p.m. You can see that very tight pressure gradient in central Kansas. Now we're looking at wind hazards all the way back into Colorado as well. One of the numerical models indicating 42 knot winds gusting the 62 at Denver. I'm not too sure if that's going to be out ahead of the cold front or back in this stuff. However, red flag weather, exceptional drought through this area, and they're prepping the winter wheat, but the vegetation is dried out from the recent freezes that we've had. Remember, we had 19 degrees just a couple of days ago. 
And with those low relative humidities, the high winds, the extreme drought, and there it is, the dark red indicating the highest category of drought from Imperial down towards Dodge City and over towards Wichita and even down into southeastern Oklahoma. All of that is a perfect storm for fire conditions. And Wichita indicated in their discussion possibly catastrophic fire danger on Sunday. So that is going to be something to watch. And we can see how the rest of this plays out. The Pacific Front making its way through the Central Plains, possibly a wave there in Texas, in the Texas Panhandle, and the dry line will be set up along the Cap Rock. So Monday could be a severe weather day, although I was not impressed by the thermodynamics. We talked about that back on Wednesday. Let's check in on that for midday out ahead of these storms here. And I think we're looking a little bit better, a little bit more of a loaded gun sounding, plenty of moisture, 60s dew points, although it is tapering off into 50s. But you can see a pretty stout cap there and some warm conditions aloft. So that tells me that maybe the instability is not all that great. You can see the capes are not really up there. So a lot of this convection probably is going to be forced. Let's take another sample there around Shreveport. Yeah, it looks pretty warm there, up there around 500 to 300 millibars. Certainly there is some shear, some good moisture, but I wonder if that mid-level warm air is going to be a problem on Monday. And now we'll zip through the rest of the charts. You can see that wave come together there in the Red River region of Texas Monday night and then spreading into the lower Mississippi River Valley. This could be of some concern for Tuesday. Let's check out the thermodynamics again, and maybe a little bit of cooling there that could support some severe weather, possibly some great shear curvature on that hodograph. But I don't know, still looking at a conditionally unstable lapse rate. It's certainly improved, but I'm not really sure we're seeing the kind of instability we need for widespread severe weather. Things could change, though. We'll just have to watch that over the weekend. And you can see that wave kind of weakens a little bit, moving into Pennsylvania and the Great Lakes. And by Thursday, frontal system about like that. And we're starting to redevelop the southerly flow there in Texas. Looks like another Pacific system dropping south. That's our negative P&A pattern we talked about, and another round of thunderstorms possible in Texas for Friday. In the tropics, things are fairly quiet. The five-day outlook has this little system heading westward, but I don't know yet if that's going to be a concern. The eastern Pacific, however, we've got Tropical Storm Rosalind out there, 55 knots on that, and you can see the track does head up into Mexico. Makes landfall as a Category 2 storm and then crosses into the area south of the Big Bend and into Texas for Monday. So that will be a wild card bringing in precipitable water from the south. There it is starting to cross Mexico Monday as the whole system shears out. And that will add a little bit of moisture to that front coming out of the Pacific. So how exactly that combines, it's not really clear this far out, but that will be something to keep an eye on there. And it will be picked up by that system there in the Red River region of Texas and Oklahoma. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our many generous supporters, such as Chris Kegley, Brian Lowe, Philip Slack, Styx Mix, Terry Allen Taylor. And that's just a few of our supporters. And please help support the program if you can. Like many of you, I have bills to pay and expenses. And so I have to focus my projects on where the money is. And that's just kind of the harsh reality of how things are right now. So your support is definitely appreciated. I'm going to leave you with some footage taken in Colorado back on Sunday. This was a mountain wave event 
upslope flow trying to come up the eastern side of the Sangre de Cristos and you're seeing it here from the west side where we have the downslope and some of the mountain wave activity. Anyway, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and we'll cover that severe weather or possible severe weather. So please join us for that. And for everybody else, we will see you back here on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.